Israeli officials have told so many lies since October the 7th, with so little pushback from the media that it's hard to keep up. So here from Zeteo is the first in a new segment we're calling Debunked. The top seven lies about Gaza debunked. Lie number one. There was already a ceasefire on October the 6th, and Hamas broke it. You see it said everywhere by Benjamin Netanyahu, by Hillary Clinton. They all say it, and yet it's completely false. Just two weeks before October the 7th, Israeli airstrikes hit Gaza for the third day in a row. And on October the 4th, Gaza Strip protesters received bullet wounds to ankles, medics report. Does that sound like a ceasefire to you? Even over in the occupied West Bank, before Hamas's attack on October the 7th, Israeli forces had already killed a record 234 Palestinians. If there was a ceasefire in place before October the 7th, nobody told the Israeli military. Lie number two, the priority is freeing the hostages. There's no higher priority, Joe Biden has said. And yet, last month, Israel's finance minister said bringing home the hostages is not the top priority. Hamas must be defeated, he says. Wittingly or unwittingly, the Israeli military has actually killed more Israeli hostages than its soldiers have rescued. In fact, as one Israeli journalist recently tweeted, citing new reporting from an Israeli news website, 10 hostages were killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza, some even as the Israeli military had intel they were residing in the buildings that were targeted. The IDF reportedly killed their own citizens and then lied and said they died in, quote, Hamas captivity. But sure, it's all about the hostages. Line number three, 40 beheaded babies. How can we forget the most emotive and most offensive lie of this entire conflict? A lie that went viral and was repeated by the President of the United States, who falsely said he saw pictures of beheaded babies, even though there weren't any. Nor were their babies burned in ovens, as Israeli newspaper Haaretz proved in their investigation. They were all lies. In fact, according to data released by Israel's Social Security Agency, tragically, there was one baby killed on October the 7th, 10-month-old Mila Cohen, may her memory be a blessing. But in the interests of facts, she was not beheaded. Now, one baby killed is one baby too many, a tragedy, a crime. But 40 beheaded babies is just a cynical, reckless, repulsive lie that was then used to justify the killing of hundreds of Palestinian babies. Line number four, there was a Hamas base underneath the Al Shifa hospital. Remember this video from the Israeli military claiming Hamas's main headquarters were under the hospital? Wow, an underground lair straight out of a Bond movie. To this day, we have yet to see any evidence of such a headquarters under Al Shifa. Sure, as the AP has reported, the Israelis found a pair of metal cots in a room fashioned from rusty white tile. They appeared to be out of use. Meanwhile, the Washington Post said the underground rooms found by Israel showed no immediate evidence of military use by Hamas, and Israel has provided no hard evidence that Hamas was using the hospital as a command and control center. The Israeli military lied so that they could attack more hospitals under the same false pretext. Line number five, you can't trust the Hamas health ministry. Remember what Israeli spokesman Mark Regev said to me on Peacock back in November? The Gaza Health Ministry says Israel has killed more than 11,000 people in Gaza, including the a record Hamas, number of The Hamas children. controlled. Uh, let, the me, Hamas, let me finish my the Hamas question. Controlled. Let me finish my question. No, but, no, but, no, but you, have, you can't say that. No, but I, you said you have to say the Hamas controlled the Ministry of Health in Gaza. You can say that. I have to Please. say what you asked me to say. Why mention Hamas controlled every time? Because you can't trust the Health Ministry's numbers, right? Except the Israeli military does. The Israeli military has secretly found the Gaza Health Ministry's casualty figures to be reliable and even uses those numbers for its own intelligence briefings. Oh, and the world's most famous medical journal, The Lancet, found no evidence of inflated mortality reporting from the Gaza Ministry of Health. Lie number six, there is no hunger in Gaza. That is an exact quote from an Israeli defense official. And it's a lie, obviously. Ask the parents of poor Mahmoud Fatou, the two-month-old baby who starved to death recently in Gaza. According to the World Food Program, four out of five of the hungriest people in the world right now are in Gaza. And lie number seven. The Gazans getting killed today elected Hamas. They voted for them. Put aside for one moment the Bin Ladenist logic that says if you vote a way I don't like, I get to kill you. It's just not true that Gazans elected Hamas. It's a lie. Half of the population of Gaza are kids under the age of 18. Most of them weren't even born when the last elections in Gaza took place nearly two decades ago. And even in those 2006 legislative elections, Hamas didn't win a majority of the votes cast in Gaza. So again and again, the Israeli government and its supporters in the West tell brazen, shameless lies about the war. And so again and again, we must call out those dangerous and deadly lies, even if others in our media won't.